Hi. So let me start by saying I am honored to be your commencement speaker. When Robert Starks asked me to do this, I had one question for him. Why me? His answer was simple, and I quote, because you're a darn handsome young man and these graduates deserve someone attractive up there talking to them. <laughs> I thought that was a bit weird too. Being a young executive and entrepreneur in the gaming industry was a better reason, but he is the expert, so who am I to judge? However, in an effort to show that I'm not just a pretty face on this stage, I'm going to tell you about some of the more valuable things I've learned over the last few years of starting and running a successful game company. First off, I think it's important that I tell you that, unlike you, I didn't actually graduate from college. In fact, I barely finished my first year. I dropped out for two very simple reasons. The first was that I didn't see what was going to come of my degree I was chasing. And the second was I didn't like going to a school that had a 12 to 1 guy to girl ratio. <laughs> While the second reason probably had a bit more to do with it, the first was far more telling of where my head was at at the time. It took me a few years of going at it the hard way to realize how naive of me dropping out really was. I screwed around for a year or so doing everything from waiting tables to being a courier, and after not too long I realized that I was exactly what I promised myself I wouldn't be. The guy with no marketable skills just getting by in life. So I decided it was time to try to start something. I taught myself action script, which for those of you that didn't spend their whole college career staring at error screens and output panels, is the programming side of Flash. I learned in doing that that it's very hard to have the student, me, know the exact same amount as the teacher, also me. I also started to realize that the stuff I so quickly passed on in college wasn't the steps on a path to a job that I may or may not like, but rather a set of tools that would make me that much more capable of reaching the goals I set for myself. Having realized that after taking the long, painful way, I was roughly where you are now. I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and thinking, I finally had a good, job, a good shot at getting a sweet job. Turns out it wasn't quite that easy. All I had to do after I got my unorthodox education was this. Invent the first social viral widgets, build a website to distribute those widgets, learn how to configure and fix servers, generally at 3 a.m. because for some reason that's when they always crash, learn the ins and outs and evils of online marketing, incorporate a company, hire people to do my bidding, survive the death of MySpace, learn how to make Twitter games, make one, watch that fail, learn how to make Facebook games, make some, and that's all there was to it. <laughs> Take about four years, no big deal, right? Point is, there is no easy way and there is no finish line. The first step that is your education is giving you the tools you need to start your second step, which will give you what you need for step three. And on step five or six, you'll hopefully still really enjoy what you're doing. If you're not having a blast, please, for the love of God, Buddha, or Joe Pesci, whoever your deity of choice is, <laughs> stop doing it. No matter what you have invested, if you hate what you're doing, don't do it. You're never going to be a superstar if you don't truly enjoy what you're doing. And you're never going to be rich if you're not a superstar at whatever it is you do. Also, don't be afraid to fail. You're going to fail. A lot. Look around. Someone around you is failing right now. Whether it's the fact that they just woke up from a five minute nap and think I'm starting my speech mid-sentence, or that they just let one slip and are very concerned that you might notice. <laughs> they're failing right now. And mark my words, they're going to overcome this failure. They'll probably even learn from it, and that's the point. Failure is a better teacher than all the professors you had through this grueling, wonderful, painful, awesome educational experience. Why? Because you remember when you fail, vividly, and in some cases painfully. Your brain is wired that way. It's a survival mechanism. When our ancestors were being chased through the polar ice caps by velociraptors on their way to settle this land, it was the previous failures of screaming, no stop chasing me, and not zigzagging that really helped teach them a better strategy of survival <laughs> through failure. So, of course, we all know no one can outrun a raptor. So eventually, even those people didn't survive. The ones that did were the ambitious ones. They were the ones that colonized this land. These people, your ancestors, were the smarter, more cunning, and more ambitious folks that learned to trip the slower, weaker people. <laughs> Tripping was an innovation. 
and it came from being ambitious enough to try something new. I'm not saying you should trip people up on your path to success. What I am saying is you need to look out for unique, out-of-the-box approaches to reaching your goals. That is, unless, of course, you're being chased by a dinosaur or other large, fast predator. In that case, I do recommend tripping people. <laughs> also, here's a fun fact. Several people just started listening again when I said the word velociraptor and are now confused as all hell as to what I'm talking about. There's a lesson to be learned in that as well. Pay attention. Not a single one of you got a degree in accounting or medicine or lawyering here. At least I hope not, because if you did, you might be at the wrong ceremony. <laughs> but what that means is you're going to run into a lot more people like me on your path through this field. Most all of us got to where we are by actually doing something. We were forced to be creative and take it upon ourselves to build something new and different. And that means we have something to offer you. Unlike law firms, accounting practices, and other age-old industries, these ones you're entering are really pretty new. It's a highly competitive, performance-based world that thrives on obsession and creativity. That means you're going to have to perform, and quickly. Pay attention to those that hire or give you the opportunity to be hired. They created something valuable to get where they are. And maybe more importantly, pay attention to your new coworkers and colleagues. They all passed the tests you have or will face, and they've already been doing what you're getting hired for for some time. That means that they can offer you shortcuts to being that much more awesome at what you do. That brings me to an unfair and wonderful perk for those of you of the superior gender graduating here tonight. Ladies, way to be considerably more nerdy than all those women that went to law school or med school or whatever else. You have a long open road ahead of you working within companies that have a 10 to 1 male to female ratio. While it most likely won't and shouldn't influence the hiring process, when you get a job in these industries, you're going to be very popular with your coworkers. <laughs> My only words of advice on that are these. If you aren't already happily taken, don't settle for the first incredibly smart, extremely awkward dude wearing Vibrams and a Woot shirt. There are plenty more like him to choose from that are just as terrified of talking to you. <laughs> and for the guys. I realize it's considerably more likely that you're still single. But I also know. <laughs> but I also know that every single one of you got your degree solely because you love the industry you're entering. So clearly, you have no interest in knowing how to approach and win over the incredibly attractive and smart girls that you'll undoubtedly be working with soon. So I'm just going to skip over that information. <laughs> What I do want to bring up as I near the end of this address is a very insightful quote from one of the most renowned and meaningful prophets of our time, Conan O'Brien. <laughs> he said, failure to become our perceived ideal is what ultimately defines us and makes us unique. Especially with these skills you've gained, you are absolutely, def definitely, unequivocally not going to be doing in five years what you think you're going to be doing right now. And that's okay. It's that unexpected life change that keeps things interesting and entertaining. You'll be on a path that is very different than the one you're on now. And you'll be very grateful for the journey. So don't fight it. Embrace it. In fact, if any of you end up working for me, I sincerely hope you do. I will make sure of it. Just so I wasn't a liar in your commencement address. <laughs> Finally, I'd just like to once again say that I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be here and to make up this speech on the spot in front of you today while I pretend to read it off my iPad. <laughs> The power I feel as I represent one of the last things standing between you and your diplomas is really magnificent. If I could drag this out for hours just to feed my ego, I certainly would. But lucky for you, they only gave me 10 minutes to speak. So let me end with this. You're awesome. You did it. Congratulations. <laughs>